Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Today we are reviewing the Blackmagic Design A10 Mini Extreme ISO. This is like my fourth attempt at doing this review. The reason being, not because it's not a good product, spoiler alert, it's a great product, I'm going to buy one, but it's incredibly deep. There's so much to get into on here that I could do an entire series of videos about this device. And that's just not appropriate for the DJ City channel. So before we go any further, let me point you to a couple of YouTubers who I think do a great job of explaining the ins and outs of the A10 Mini line. I've learned so much from both of those guys. First one is the Here to Record channel, and the second one is Aaron Parecki. We'll link both of their channels in the description of this one. So if you want to go deep, go watch those guys' content. I do, and I learn loads from them. The A10 Mini line from Blackmagic, you know, Blackmagic Design have made high-end professional broadcast video switches for years and years. But then at the end of 2019, they dropped the A10 Mini, which is a $300 device. It basically lets you switch four HDMI inputs into one webcam output to feed into OBS or whatever your streaming software of choice is. It also has two mic inputs, which can be switched to line level. Sounds pretty good for a DJ, right? So that's why I first bought one of those. Then they dropped the A10 Mini Pro in early 2020, and that's what I've been using ever since. What that adds to the mix is the ability to stream directly from the hardware. You have an Ethernet port on the rear, you connect it to the internet, press go, and you're off. So that's why I like that so much. It's just incredibly reliable and dependable. I don't have to worry about having a very high-powered, very expensive like gaming PC, basically, to do streams with. I can just use, I control everything, in fact, in this lab, with a 2012 Mac Mini. That is how I control my stream. So, yeah, I love the idea of just doing stuff with hardware. It's a bit like playing off a USB stick with media players, as opposed to DJing with a laptop. On the one hand, perhaps you could perhaps do more with a laptop, but playing on a media player, it forces you to work in a certain way, and then once you get used to that workflow, you kind of find it's quite efficient and reliable and dependable. So yeah, horses for courses, you know, everyone's got their own kind of take on it. I didn't want to buy a massive streaming PC. I prefer this hardware route. So yeah, the A10 Mini Pro, that came along. I reviewed that last year. We'll link that review down in the description below as well. Then they bought out the A10 Mini Pro ISO, which adds ISO recording, which basically lets you record all of the inputs at the same time. I'll talk about that here in a minute because we're looking at the Extreme ISO. And then now we have the A10 Mini Extreme and the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. Now I think Blackmagic Design are kind of pushing the limits of the word mini with these two. They're a lot bigger than their predecessors, but they're not huge. When you break it down with what they do compared to previous streaming hardware from other generations, they're actually still very, very compact. As with the previous models in the mini line, they've got HDMI inputs. There's no SDI here. That's the super low latency, like pro level connection for video inputs. HDMI can have latency with some cameras like mine, for example, but Blackmagic Design did introduce a audio delay into the audio mixer inside of these. So now you can have a preset audio delay. I set that when the firmware update came out last year and I've never had to think about my audio since. And as a DJ, you know, audio is top priority. That just makes these so useful because I've got those line inputs. I can run any DJ mixer, any controller. I usually run my Rodecaster Pro directly in. That's my audio device. And I just never have to think about audio. It always sounds good. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I'm just all about this kind of way of working. So yeah, we have the Extreme ISO and the Extreme. Now these have eight HDMI inputs. Now you might be thinking, I'm never gonna need eight cameras. What are you doing? Like, that's just ridiculous. But I've got to a point where I kind of need five inputs because you're not just using those for camera inputs necessarily. Like on this one right now, I have one, I've got the overhead, I've got the G7, I've got a GoPro hooked up, and normally I have a GH5 as well. But then I've also got OBS coming in from a different computer. I'll show you what that's doing in a minute. But yes, I have four different things running in. And in theory, I could certainly get to five very quickly, you know, maybe six. So I think having eight is quite good in terms of future proofing. The great thing about these inputs, the device is 1080p 
full HD. It doesn't do 4K streaming, but it will accept 4K inputs like this GoPro, for example, that I've got right here is running in. That's a 4K signal going into the A10 Mini Extreme ISO right now. And you can have like different frame rates as well. So you can choose your overall frame rate. It always does 1080p regardless, but you can choose whether you wanna have like 25, 30 or 60 FPS, for example. And so if you've got something that's putting out 720p and 50 frames a second, then that will be matched up inside the hardware. So everything comes together in that one output. An older hardware, much more expensive hardware than this, didn't used to be able to do that automatic scaling. So that's a big thing with the mini line. It is very much plug and play from that point of view. Now we'll get to the buttons. We'll talk about the hardware, right? So yeah, we have the eight HDMIs. We've got two HDMI outputs. We've got two USBs and the Ethernet. We'll talk about that in a minute. This one does have a headphone port, um, which wasn't on the other models. So the mini, the mini pro, the mini pro ISO, they did not have a headphone output. That's assignable as well. You can choose within the software what you want that assigned to. You can control it from the front panel. So that's a nice addition. Generally, I think as DJ, certainly myself, I'm monitoring my audio elsewhere in the chain, but it's great to have that ability to do that if you want. When it comes to these controls on the top panel, we have an individual switch for each input. Then we have audio controls. You can have audio follows video. You can have turn it on or off. I have them all off because I'm just using the line input as a rule. Then these controls up above, you can kind of disregard these unless you own Blackmagic design cameras like the Pocket Cinema 4K, 6K Pro, the Ursa, that kind of stuff. Those can be controlled from this hardware or from the control software. Whereas I don't have any of those. So actually these buttons for me are kind of redundant. You can do like focus, you can do the um, shutter speed, you know, all of that kind of stuff directly from this device as part of your stream. That's very cool but I just don't have any Blackmagic design cameras. So I can't test that for myself. And if you don't have them your, yourself, then you're not gonna make use of these buttons either. So don't worry about those. Audio controls up here for the two inputs and the headphone output. Then we have the select bus, which is to do with the overlays. I'll get to that in a minute. We have picture in picture, again, overlay stuff. And so then we've got the record and the stream buttons. These are really the most important ones. These are the only ones I ever really actually push on any of this hardware because I tend to use the control software, macros, and something like an Elgato Stream Deck. This is the Stream Deck XL. So I use that in conjunction with a free application called Companion that makes the Stream Deck talk to the software control utility. So let's get into that quickly. This is connected via the Ethernet. So this is controlled over the network. It sees the different devices on my network. So I can go in and choose the connection. I actually have the A10 Mini Pro hooked up as well at the moment, recording the multi-view output. But yeah, so that's how we do our connection. And then we can actually switch from the software itself. So I can go through and do the switching. And then we can also control pretty much all this other stuff that's going on to so the output. Right now, I'm going to HyperDeck high setting. That is generally gonna be far too high for you to, to actually stream with that. You know, you can set your own streaming Preferences, I have a bunch of different ones in there um, for streaming high, medium and low that I've set and I've set those inside an XML file. If you get this and you wanna go deep with it, you're gonna to have to get used to editing XML files. That's just how it is, especially when we get to the macro side of things. But there's your live stream output. You put your stream key in there, choose your server. Um, you can add additional things in there. You can do custom RTMP, whatever you want. You can stream wherever you like with this, as long as it actually accepts an RTMP kind of stream, then that's fine. Then we have the recording. Now, on the regular Pro and the regular Extreme, you can record the output and basically that's it. So you can record your stream. And that's what I've been doing for the past year with the A10 Mini Pro. I put a USB stick into the back of the A10 Mini Pro, hit record and just record my stream. And then I've got a locally recorded, top quality, you know, as, as good as the stream is, copy of my stream, which I then upload to YouTube. All of my streams, which I put onto YouTube, I have just been recorded in that way. But with the ISO, so with the Extreme ISO and the Pro ISO, you have the option to click ISO record all inputs. And what that does, that will then record all of the inputs and the output at the same time. And that will give you a project file for DaVinci Resolve, which is Blackmagic Design's own video editing software, and it's free. And you can then go back in and edit 
your stream using the original source recordings from each input. So as you can imagine, if you're recording in high quality, that's going to use a lot of data quite quickly. You know, I can look at my disk that I've got here now. I've got 353 gigabytes free, and that gives me an hour and a half with what I'm recording, potentially. So yeah, if you're going to do the ISO recording, you're going to need a fast drive, and you're going to need a big drive to do that. But it's fantastic to have that option. I'm not sure whether I would pump up the extra, because the thing is, right, you've got the original, the, the standard Mini Extreme, which is a thousand bucks. And then you've got the extreme ISO, which is 1300 bucks. This is dollar prices in the US. That's a difficult one for me to say whether you should go for that. Only you will really know. I think if you're like recording, let's say you're recording routines, you're doing a DJ routine, you just want to set it going and record everything at once and have that project file, then that might work for you. There are a bunch of different uses for it. People make their YouTube videos with that. But yeah, I don't know. It's a, quite a big jump. You know, $300 from the extreme to the extreme ISO. You've just got to kind of toss that up whether that's worth it for you or not. Hey there, this is Mojax from the future. Even in this hella long video, there was bound to be some stuff on there that I forgot to mention. But there's one thing that I really do want to emphasize, and that is just how much of an upgrade it is having two USB ports on both extreme models. On the original Mini, you had the one USB, and you could use that to feed into your streaming software to show up as a webcam. With the Pro and the Pro ISO, because you could stream directly via the built-in streaming encoder over Ethernet, that USB port could be used instead to attach a drive to and record locally. But although USB hubs are supported, what you couldn't do is feed out a webcam signal over USB and record locally at the same time. Now with the extremes you have two USBs, so the potential setup options are expanded massively. Just wanted to make that clear. Back now to Mojax in the past. Going back to the control software, we then have the media players. Now let's go into the media pool here at the bottom. And basically I just use these for my like overlay. So I've got different overlays for different shows and those I have on a downstream key. So they come after everything else that's going on. So if I just turn on downstream key one, that puts my logo in the top right hand corner. That's just a transparent image, target file with a transparent background. And I can choose different ones. I can have a bunch of different stuff in there. You can't put video files into this. It is just there for static images but you can, as you can see you can have loads of stuff stored in there and have different ones available to you so that's the downstream key that comes after everything else we're going to get into the upstream keys in a minute um so i'll go back to let's turn that one off let's go back to the switcher i just want to show you the multi-view now this is the multi-view that you're looking at here i'm recording this separately and we'll get into the settings on it now with the blackmagic atem mini there was no multi-view. With the ATEM Mini Pro, there is multi-view, but it's not like customizable. This one is completely customizable in every way. I can put different layouts so I can have, you know, all the different inputs showing up. I can choose what I want to see in each thing. And I can show VU meters or not, you know, depending on what I want to do. It's fantastic from that point of view. You've got loads of control, loads of ability to see what you're doing. And with the Extreme and the Extreme ISO, you have two HDMI outputs. So you can have the multi-view feeding out to one monitor, and you can have, say, the master or the program output, or a clean feed without the downstream keys on it. You can feed out whatever you want to that second HDMI output. You could feed that to another capture card and record, or you can feed it out to a second monitor and just have a full screen preview for a presenter, whatever you want. Just having the two HDMIs does make a difference. I'm feeding out multi-view from the second one. The first one I've got control of here on the hardware itself. I can press these buttons and choose what's being sent through HDMI one. The second one you do in the software. So we just go up to outputs, output two. And as you can see, that is sending multi-view out there at the moment. So it's just a really useful thing. And that's what I use, you know, multi-view when I'm streaming, I have the multi-view up. I can see what's going on with each camera. I can see my audio levels. I can see what my stream health is like. All of this information is right there in front of me. Just an incredibly useful thing to have. So let's talk about now SuperSource. Now SuperSource is something that is, it's never been found in hardware at this kind of price level ever. This has only ever been found in very high end stuff. And yes, you could do this with OBS, right? But to do this with OBS in software, you're gonna need 
lots of capture cards, lots of devices, ways of getting the stuff into the computer. You're gonna need audio interface and you're going to need a lot of processing power, a lot of GPU to achieve this kind of stuff. So let's make Supersource now our live feed. So that is what we've got now. So we can see we've got the first four inputs all on there, but you don't have to leave it there. You can do more than that. We have preset layouts. So we've got the four up, we've got the four with the different sizes. We have the first two and we have that one, which is cropped with the left-hand side, etc. And then you can change your background. So for example, if I wanna change my background from just black, I can change it to the wide. So we've got a video background here. That's the key is you've got a video background to play with. So I can feed in you know, visuals through an HDMI from like a Hyperdeck or from OBS or anything like that. I can feed visuals in and do what I want. And you can have the it be on the foreground or on the background. So if I wanna have a uh, like frames, for example, around these boxes, I can do that. And I've seen people animate between the different presets. So you can have, let's say you got, you wanna have a video screen coming up and you wanna slide your DJ camera off to one side, make it smaller, etc. You can animate all of that with macros and then you can change what's in these as well. So box one, in this one, I can enable it or disable it. I can choose what's in it. I can choose its position. I can choose its size. I can crop it as well. So super source, it just gives you the ability to have these five things on the screen at the same time. I can also have my downstream key on top of that as well for my logo in the corner. So many different options with Supersource. It's one of these things that I've barely scratched the surface of at this point. Like I've hardly touched this. I've kind of used the presets and I'm thinking about what could be done with it. And I'm just thinking, yeah, the potential here is, is just simply huge. So yeah, loads of choices with Supersource. I think that's a really nice feature. We'll go back, come out of Supersource and go from there. Now, the next one, we'll talk about these overlays. This is the reason that I'm gonna buy an Extreme over the regular Pro. Yeah, the extra inputs are nice and everything else, that's great. But the big reason is, with the regular Mini, the Mini Pro and the Pro ISO, you have one downstream key, so for like a static overlay. On this one, the Extremes, you have two, that's great. On the other models, you have one upstream key, on the extremes, you have four. Not two, not three, but four. What can you do with the upstream keys? Well, let's take a look. So firstly, this is what I use for my drum and bass shows. I have a, it's basically a pattern. DV. These are kind of called DVEs. This, you've, you've got like picture in picture, right? So you can do a normal picture in picture, position it anywhere. You can crop it, put a border on it, whatever you like. That's pretty standard, right? So you can have multiple picture in pictures going on with this, aside from the super source, completely removed from that. And then, but I use this pattern. So I have a circle, I have a very soft edge on it, and that gives me the ability, it just means it looks really good. Like I can, I can do visuals around the outside, and I just love the look of that. And you can have all different kinds of patterns and everything else. Luma key, that's if you've got like a, a static thing or something playing over a black background. You can basically key out the black, you know, it's basically doing luminosity, it's doing the lighting. That's cool, but if you want something more clean, then perhaps you might want to look at chroma key. So if I go into upstream key two, where I've got this preset, I've got OBS running on a MacBook Pro over here. So that's channel five, there we go. And that's just putting out green. Okay, I've set that green up. I've, I've chosen that green. That is a full screen preview inside OBS. OBS has just got a browser source on it. It doesn't have anything else. You can run videos with you know, a green background and actually key stuff out that way, but I'm using it for overlays. So if you're using Twitch or something like that, you might want to include things like Stream Elements or Streamlabs overlays. So you can have pop-ups when people follow you or subscribe and that kind of stuff. Well, I've just set that up with OBS. So I've got that running in a simulated way here. So as you can see, that's what's coming. This is what is actually coming from the computer that's in just running OBS right now. That's what it's feeding out. But I can turn that, of course, into a key. So I've turned that into my upstream key number two. So if I turn that on and I switch over here, then we can see that I've keyed out the green and now my overlay is coming up. And you can do regular green screen as well. It doesn't have to be, you know, OBS or something like that. You can have a regular green screen running. This is some footage that I shot earlier with a Thundercats character 
and that's just a green screen. And that's not even a very nicely done green screen. I haven't worked a lot on the lighting or the background is a mess and all that. But you can see the potential. And the thing is, there are four of these. So you can have yourself on a green screen DJing. You can have your overlays going as well. You can have a picture in picture happening with that at the same time. And one more to spare because you've got four of these upstream keys. And that's where the power of this just really starts to make itself known. You know, to do this level of stuff with a PC, you're gonna spend a lot of money, like a lot of money. And that's before you even think about getting the stuff, your you know, cameras, etc., into the device. So I think when you start looking at it from that point of view, the value proposition for these is actually really good. You know, a thousand bucks for the regular extreme without the ISO recording. I think compared to a high-end gaming PC and then the capture cards that you need, etc., that starts to sound like a bit of a bargain to me. So that is the upstream key. It's just, it's so important to note that that's what they can do. And then we have the, the hardware switching itself, the select bus. You can actually choose what is going on with the upstream key. So you've got key one, chroma, pattern, etc. So you can select all of this from the hardware. But again, I don't really use the hardware to switch anything. I use the Stream Deck and I use Companion and I just have everything set up as macros. I did talk about macros in the review of the A10 Mini Pro, but I'll just show you again. So I'll bring up the macros window. You can create macros and you can run them, you can loop them, you can do whatever you want. I have loads of different ones there, but also you can go in and edit them in an XML editor. So you can copy and paste things around. You can get scripts from other people and put them into your macros. It's kind of complex. Go watch Aaron Parecki or whatever if you want to know about the macro thing in some depth. Hello, future Mojax again. I don't know why I kept forgetting to mention this, but there are now six macro buttons on the hardware itself with the Extreme and the Extreme ISO. For me, that isn't enough. I have many more macros than that set up that I use with my Stream Deck, but for many applications, that will suffice. So it's just worth bearing in mind. You don't even need now a computer to access your macros with the hardware but that's how I use this hardware. I don't touch the hardware. The only thing I ever do, I press the stream on and off and the record on and off. The rest of it's just done with macros. And again, I just use a really ancient Mac mini for that. I don't need a hardcore computer running this browser source overlay. I run that from the same Mac mini. You know, I do not have a lot of computing power going on at all with my setup with, with the extreme or with the, the Pro before it, I just don't need it there. I think I've just about covered everything I want to in this video. I'm sure that, I don't know what the timing of this video is now, but I'm sure it's quite long at this point. But if you want more detail, as I say, go and check out those channels I recommend. They will give you some really in-depth stuff. There's one other thing I will point out is that Blackmagic Design have been very good about adding new stuff with firmware. So they bought the audio delay, for example, they then bought the ability with the Pro and the Pro ISO and now with these extremes as well, you can actually save your media pool stuff to the hardware. So you don't necessarily need to have control over this. If you set everything up with the ATEM software control and then you save that as the startup state of your device, then when you go out to say a gig and just turn it on, everything that you put in there, your stream key, your overlays, everything is all saved to the unit and you can just press stream. That's incredibly powerful as well. They added that feature in. They've also added in the ability to use the USB port to tether your phone. So you just plug your phone in via USB and use your phone's data to stream with as well, which is great if you're on the road or if you, you know, have connection issues at a gig or something like that. That could be a really handy thing to have. So I just like the fact that they are updating these products as they go. They're not like just bringing out the A10 Mini and then the Pro and they forget about those and move on to the extremes. You know, the older models get these updates too. Obviously there are limitations with the hardware. There's clearly new stuff coming with the extreme as well because there is a button up here that says Sting. And as of right now, there is no Stinger function or anything within the software or within the hardware. So there's clearly more stuff coming down the line for this as well. I just think, yeah, if you're of that mindset that you're wanting to work in this kind of hardware way, yes, you're using software to control, but you don't like the kind of big sandbox way of working that you have with software like OBS. Like for me, I find that a bit oppressive almost because it's too open. There's too much that I could potentially do 
And whereas I'd rather work in this kind of way where I have these this workflow that I have to kind of fit within the parameters of, but then as time goes on, I discover the power that is within that workflow and the efficiencies of that workflow. And it just really works for me. So I think, yeah, the extreme ISO, I'm, I'm torn between the extreme and the extreme ISO. I, I think the ISO stuff could come in handy for me. Is it worth the extra 300 bucks? I don't know. But either way, this will be the future of my streaming setup from now on. One of these extremes will be it because it's just, yeah, the value proposition compared to older hardware, compared to buying a streaming PC. For me, it's just next level. This is how I want to work and this is how I'm going to work. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks and product reviews. I'll see you soon.